say. And uh, the rule is, is quite clear. Uh, it would be regarded as treason, and the federal armed forces would step in and would take over the power. And this is obviously, this, this article is obviously uh, shaped in the light of what happened in the, in the early 1920s when, when uh, uh, the Rhineland, for example, the Rhineland tried to break away and the, the Reichswehr, the then armed forces, stepped in and, and suppressed that type of, uh, of unilateral uh, breaking away and possibly joining the French arch enemy. <laughs> as it was regarded. <laughs> uh, so we've got a very, very clear position on that. Uh, so if, if uh, I, I would think we have, we, have, we have thought about this matter, and uh, the fruit of this internal discussion is the is the my idea that we think it's an absolutely unique case, and there can be no parallels drawn in whatever part. I would actually like to pick up on that. Um, in, in terms of Kosovo as a unique case, of course, one of the major issues with Kosovo is uh, not simply Kosovo as on its own, but the issue of precedence, not only for subject nationalism, but also because, as I think has been made clear, Kosovo is, is entirely dependent economically, militarily, even bureaucratically on the European Union, the United Nations, and, and NATO. And, and in terms of, of the response of the United States, this is the first time the, the EU has taken responsibility for a sovereign or semi-sovereign nation. Will that set a precedence for European Union uh, foreign, uh, foreign affairs? Will the EU, could the EU conceivably take some sovereign responsibility for other new nations? And that's a question to either party. You know, since uh, this is considered sui generis a unique case, there must be something to it. <laughs> if it is going to be unique, it will be unique for everything. In our case, we do not follow the reasoning. We do not think it is a unique case. That is why, precisely, we apply the same uh, rule as we would apply to any other. That is, we follow what uh, we need to be the wing of the international community. But uh, I don't foresee any other cases of any, you know, the European Union taking responsibility for sovereignty anywhere. What they are doing now, what the ULEX is doing now, is trying to make sure that uh, whether it is an independent state as is the point of view of some countries, or where, whether it enjoys uh, what the UN resolution calls a meaningful autonomy and uh, an effective self-determination, is actually viable precisely to prevent the problems that uh, you were pointing out. Um, do we, does the Spanish government uh, endorse uh, Spanish participation in Kosovo through the EU. Oh, yes, we do. Yes, the, uh, the UNEX was decreed upon on, yes. uh, what was this, the 19th of, uh, meeting in Brussels was 19th of February, and there was no, no veto. Um, it is the biggest operation, the biggest operation of uh, in the European, Europe system, European Union system of support for for a foreign state, it's the biggest, with 1,800 people. And, uh, it, 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 I don't know how many countries will effectively take part in person, but certainly all the countries will, will have to finance it. It's and we have, you know, has, yes. We have uh, the military contingent, we have there was about 650 soldiers, and uh, as I tell you, whether as uh, part of a meaningful uh, self-determination or in any other way, we want to make sure that there are no problems with this 
entity that we do not call a state because we do not recognize it as a state. Call it autonomy, call it uh, whatever. And we should hear how it does. Will you like set a precedent for the, for the EU? Well, it does. I mean, we must see if uh, it was decided in principle at the end of February, or mid February, 8th and 9th of February, and I think. Only in March, uh, the first concrete preparations were made, and the federal government decided to take part only this month. So it's, it's barely very early stages. Uh, but uh, as I said, the principle has been decided upon positively, so we will see this this uh, force uh, uh, being deployed. Uh, the interesting question is how they will cooperate with the um, uh, UNMIX uh, force that was set up in 1999. Uh, uh, whether they will take over gradually or whether they will separate the country from different zones. We will have to see. I think a lot of things are not decided upon and will develop uh, over the time. Yes, um, no one's, <coughs> no one's uh, talked about uh, Serbia that much um, in, in, terms of, in terms of the political dynamics of uh, Serbia and in terms of um, how will both your respective governments and other governments um, gaze in the future with, with the Serbian government. Can I ask both of you to comment in your own national basis about uh, relations between your governments and the Serbian government and where you think those relations and the wider issue of Serbian engagement with the European Union, where is left as a result of this issue? Well, uh, we have relations with Serbia, we continue having relations with Serbia. If, uh, we do not have relations with Kosovo because we don't recognize the existence of Kosovo. It is from our point of view, like that. Um, it is, uh, I was reading the newspaper today, that there are going to be Serbian elections now because uh, the Prime Minister that has uh, decided to solve the Assembly. I do not know what will happen, really. I think that the situation is not particularly rosy for the next uh, Serbian elections, and of course, I something that I cannot, not being a specialist in the Balkans either, I cannot say very well. But I do not think that the international situation is uh, very good for moderate positions to uh, come to the fore in the forthcoming Serbian. I hope that my uh, foreseeing capabilities prove as bad for this as they prove for the Euro millions, which were quite bad. But certainly it doesn't look very promising. Yeah, um, the relations between, in this case, Germany and the former 